car has enslaved us. If we are to understand cars and how they so completely define our culture, we will need to begin at the beginning. Come on, honey, here we go. It had started so innocently. Okay, we got spark. A man sweet-talking to the love of his life. Carriages chugged off without their horses a hundred years ago. Now, at the end of the century, the changes we have witnessed are, well, monumental. At the turn of the century, 20 million people lived more than a day's ride from town. Most farmers had milk cows and other animals that had to be cared for daily. Hitching up a team and wagon for a town trip was an infrequent and difficult event. The car brought freedom from all that. One of the central myths of our car culture is that Henry Ford invented the automobile. He did not. No one person really invented the automobile. The first models were a rolling collection of assorted parts from many inventors. The French are generally credited with the first successful gasoline engine in 1861, 35 years before Henry Ford. It managed to wheeze along, generating a thundering one and a half horsepower. It turns out that horses are involved in another myth of the car culture. The automobile brought pollution to cities, right? Wrong. Before the noise and stench of cars, there was the noise and stench of horses. Imagine 130,000 horses in Manhattan at the turn of the century. Imagine the sights, the sounds. Imagine the smell. All that from the overworked animals that managed to stay alive. The horses sometimes died and you had this enormous dead horse lying by the side of the road until someone could get rid of it. I think it, it has to have been very difficult. I mean, when we think of horses today, we think of these beautiful animals prancing along. But if you imagine um, a crowded streets that are crowded with cars, substitute horses, it, it has to have been uh, pretty awful. As early as 1868, there were public calls for a cheap mechanical substitute for the horse. That is a major reason why America fell in love with the automobile so quickly and completely. By 1925, 25 million cars had been built. The love affair had become a torrid obsession. The General Motors Corporation was by then the largest car maker in the world. Alfred Sloan, president of GM at the time, had the idea of organizing the company into semi-autonomous divisions that were structured along military lines and overseen by a central office. The GM organization became the model for most large corporations throughout the 20th century. Everything's the flea's eyebrows, the snake's hips, and I don't mean maybe. Americans are rolling in the stuff. It's only money. The automobile also changed America's attitude about cash and credit. It didn't take much time for time payments to catch on. By 1923, about three quarters of all cars sold were being financed. See our used cars tomorrow. You will be amazed to find so many very fine late model cars offered at such low prices and on such easy terms. We have the car that will make a hit with the whole family. One enthusiastic car dealer wrote in Motor Magazine, Higher standards of living are built up through millions of individual extravagances. To keep America working, we must keep America wanting. Wanting the luxuries and frills that make life so much more worthwhile. And installment selling makes it easier to keep America wanting. 